My 31 female fiancé's 30 male ex, 29 female died and my relationship is in shambles. Original post. My fiancé, 30 male, and I, 31 female, have been together for nearly three years. We were super excited for our wedding that's gonna take place six months from now. I had a hard boundary against exes in the relationship, and we both agreed to that. No pictures, no contact, no stories, nothing. Prior to meeting me, he was in a serious relationship for about the same time as us. However, his ex-29 female one day told him she no longer loves him and they broke up. He was heartbroken and it took him months to heal. Since his ex was blocked, her mom contacted my fiancé and told him she had cancer and wanted to meet him one last time. This was a difficult decision considering my boundaries, but I felt really sorry this girl was losing her life so young. So, I supported my fiancé's decision to see her, but on the condition that I'll be in the same room as them. Apparently, she had developed skin cancer, and the doctor had drawn up a prognosis for her a few months before they broke up. The ex told both of us that she wanted him to lead a happy life with a woman who could share a life with him, and wished as well. That's why she lied about not loving him anymore, and that she always loved him all this time. She recently died three weeks ago, and my fiancé is a mess. I can't see the way they both held each other's hands, and a look of nostalgia and love in his eyes for her, as I was looking on, feeling like an outsider. It's so difficult and hurtful to see him cry about another woman who he once loved. I literally can't hear things he said to his mom in the kitchen one day. I wonder what life could have been like with her. We could have been a happy family of our own. She wanted kids with me, and we could have named her Rose like she wanted. Where does this leave me? Why mine is life still if it'd rather be with someone else? I promised myself that I'll only ever be with a guy for whom I am his one and only, and first priority. I saw that in him before, but now I don't know. Trust me, I am not a heartless person, and I would rather not put myself in any position where I'll be considered myself a monster. But this feels incredibly complicated and extremely hurtful to feel like a third wheel in my once happy thriving relationship. He has been reaching out to me for support, and I lent a listening ear, and he has been telling me so many stories from his time with her, and I didn't like one bit of this. My therapist told me while having empathy is important, I shouldn't have to lose myself in my relationship, even if circumstances are hard. Then two days ago, he received a package in the mail, and it was from the ex's sister. Apparently, it was a photo album from their old times that the ex wanted him to have. My fiancé held it so gently and teared up a little, and I literally broke down on the floor crying, having a panic attack. I think I almost unloaded all of what I've been feeling, the third wheel, the unfairness of the whole situation based on what my boundaries around access had been, my anger at the ex for inserting herself in our lives for no good reason, when both of us were literally so happy with how things were panning out regarding our wedding. Then questioning where his loyalties lied, and I think I did it in one of the most hurtful ways. I told him that we need to pause our wedding plans for now, and wanted a week or two off to think about our relationship. I'm at my sister's place, and haven't been able to sleep or eat properly ever since. It's almost as if I'm falling out of love with my fiancé, and he has been calling and texting me non-stop. I feel so guilty right now. He had self-ending tendencies years ago and I'm afraid I might trigger that. He says his ex already passed, and it's gonna break him if I left him too. If I left him too? Emphasis on the two. I'm just done. What the heck am I supposed to do? Now for the top advice before reading the update. How did your partner respond after you shared your feelings? He just went silent for a little while and arranged for a glass of water, trying to comfort me. But I didn't want him to touch me because of how violated I felt. That's when I decided to pack a bag and told him we need to be away for a few days to really think about our priorities in this relationship. I could see some shame in his eyes too, as he didn't really try hard to stop me, because it was a losing battle to convince me to stay. Well, this is wildly complicated. On one hand, I think he's in mourning for not only this person, but also the relationship he thought they had. He mourned the relationship of someone who didn't love him, and I don't want to be that person, but you know he loved her, so her admission shifted things. On the other hand, I can understand your feelings. You're not a replacement for this woman, and shouldn't be made to feel that way. 
I do think that once it's grieved all of the individual things, assessing things will be easier. But there also should be acknowledgement that like things said in anger, things said in grief also cannot be undone. If there is not anything he can do to truly undo the image you now have, then you need to be honest with yourself about that. I'm truly so sorry for you both. I think you're both experiencing the sense of grief for answers tied to someone no longer around. Please be gentle with yourself, because you don't sound like a monster. You sound like someone trying to support their partner through a trauma that triggers things within you as well. Everyone's feelings here are valid. There's no monstrosity in that. Wonderfully said. I also feel like the ex shouldn't have told him she lied. Ex had to have known what it would cost. Why go all the way to the end and then tell him she lied? I'm sorry, but that was an awful thing to do. I 100% agree with this. She just made him feel like he wasted time he could have had with someone he loved by her pushing him away, which will only break his heart more. It's much easier to get over someone you're angry at. For sure, pause the wedding. He's grieving her. I don't think you should break up with him, but pause the wedding and see how you feel in a month or two. I'm sorry. I disagree. He settled for OP and now she knows it. There isn't any going back from that. If his feeling were really gone and he was 100% committed to OP, the ex establishing contact with him wouldn't have messed with his head like it did. And he wouldn't be asking, what if? I'm sorry to say it, but better Opie found out now than after the marriage, since now she doesn't have to suffer through a divorce. The only way forward is dumping this man, who honestly doesn't sound like he ever got over his other relationship, and rebuild her life, since marriage is hard enough without having a half-hearted partner to lug around as well. Damn dude, have some sympathy. Someone he cared about left him, let him move on. Called him back to tell him she never stopped loving him. Died. Then his current girlfriend is having some issues and want to leave him. And you're painting him the villain? Maybe they will break off, maybe they won't. Maybe they need to, maybe they don't. Give the guy some props. He did everything he was supposed to. And through no fault of his own is getting butt kicked in by life. Now for the update. To those some of you who had the most vile things to say to me, maybe because you have the baggage of a widower or plain no relationship experience, or can't understand that human emotions are complex because your lack of awareness is showing. After the initial shock of those judgmental comments wore off, I decided it was better to completely disregard any judgment that questioned my boundaries and how I handled my feelings. There simply cannot be three people in this relationship, and I refuse to believe otherwise. Many of you thought they could do better by teaching me about marriage vows, but all of you are forgetting that marriage vows also mean forsaking all others in mind, body and spirit. She might be not physically present, but he would be in a different headspace emotionally. A part of him permanently will belong to her memories. There is nothing wrong with that inherently, but it's just not for me. Some of you have different standards of partnership and that is okay. What is not okay is shaming those that have them and pretending you are better than me and would not have felt hurt if you were in my shoes. I guess on Reddit, if you can't accept downright emotionally cruel behavior from your grieving partner, you are insecure. Guess what? I'd rather be insecure than accept that my partner's heart longs for someone else. There were also some Redditors that were truly a piece of work because they assumed that my therapist was choking my ego. Why do you assume that your opinion matters more than that of a literal professional? Laughing out loud. And no, it was she who advised me to be flexible about my boundaries when I supported my ex to see his ex. But even she didn't anticipate how bad it got with a whole love confession. Everyone assessed that I am jealous of a corpse for competing with a dead person. I think you're ignoring the elephant in the room. Like, these phrases don't even make sense to me. How is it even possible to be jealous of the dead? The elephant in the room is my fiancé's emotional and relational fidelity, a full 100% commitment to me and only me, which isn't possible if you are dating a freshly grieving widower or someone who is actively longing for another person that isn't their current partner. Plus, all of those people who are questioning my boundaries have no idea what they are talking about and rather embody the pick-me and bothered non-jealous girl trope on Reddit. And maybe I made a mistake in staying in that room, but I guess also not. Because my fiancé said if I wasn't there, he wouldn't have told me anyway, because of how complicated it would have gotten. 
I guess it was the right call after all, no matter how many people like to disagree. And the fact that I knew what was going on in his heart, enabling me to leave confirms why I need those boundaries. Had I been firm about him not going to see her, I wouldn't have been left feeling like a divorcee. I don't have the energy to elaborate on how many fun stories I have listened to since her passing, but one thing stands. The fact that he moved on from the initial breakup only because she decided to end things makes me feel like he's only settling for me. And the only reason I am with him today is because of how he couldn't build a life with her. And that's a terrible foundation for a relationship where both partners should feel like the first choice. Him relieving what his future could have looked like has damaged any trust I've had in him beyond repair. I can't unhear the things he has said, and I don't think I'll ever recover from the damage it has inflicted in both of us. Stepping outside of my situation has allowed me to see things differently, and I recognized this wasn't his fault. He was just experiencing grief all over again, but it also wasn't fair to me. It's frankly not the kind of relationship I wanted, which came with such a profound baggage. And you may ask why. Maybe because I do realize that I don't have to set myself in fire to keep others warm and act as if everything is fine. A lot of comments have pointed out how poorly the ex also handled the confession, which shouldn't even have taken place at all. I forgive her because I think she unfairly paid for the loss of my relationship with her life and she didn't deserve that. I think her last minute theatrics didn't end well for my relationship because life isn't a movie and there are real feelings involved. So, yes, I broke up with my fiancé, and it was not pretty. After calling me the hundredth time, I finally agreed to speak with him as I had a time to think about things. Objectively, I had been feeling pretty inadequate, second fiddle, and an emotional dump pretty much, and it has wrecked with my sense of self. I went to our home and gave him the ring he proposed me with. I told him I don't see him in my future anymore, as seeing him grieve a future life with an ex made me lose all feelings for him. I just feel numb. He started hysterically crying and begged me to stay, because now I was breaking up with him the same way his ex once did. This made me cry even harder, as he still couldn't see beyond his grief. He asked me and screamed why am I doing this. He said a lot of cruel things to me, which are honestly painful but things really escalated here. He said he isn't letting me go and wants us to fix things. That's when I knew I wasn't safe where I was standing and I had to call my sister and his mother at his place to help ease him so that I could leave the house as quickly as possible. As his mom and my sister looked on, here was an exchange. Him, I doubt you ever had a heart. Me, what do you know about my heart when you know nothing other than your own suffering? X. Someday, I hope you'll have the decency to admit how much you regret hurting me, just like she did. And maybe, just maybe, life will serve you a different kind of cancer in the next three years to teach you a lesson. We all looked in shock and horror, and his mother gave him a well-deserved slap across his face. To say that he instantly regretted that would be an understatement. He cried like a damn broke through. I had to give him his meds one last time. My sister muttered, I hope you are ashamed of yourself, and grabbed my arm and took me out of the house. I might just look for a welfare checkup for him, as soon as I've gained some sanity and sense of normalcy. I care about him still as a person, and certainly don't want to demonize him anymore, but this is not the man I fell in love with. I guess I have to stay single for a while and find someone actually worthy of my time. When I love, I love with my full heart, and I want someone who can appreciate that. Wishing everyone, even the naysayers, peace and love. I'm going to be logging off Reddit to take care of my mental health now. I'm sorry, I won't be here to engage anymore. Again, wishing love and peace to all who cared. Last story. I'm calling off my engagement due to my fiancé's financial situation. I'm male 30 and I've been with my 38-year-old fiancé for 4 years. We got engaged a year ago and started living together. Things were great until we gave joint bank accounts a shot. We don't make a ton of money, 90k combined in a moderately expensive city. I always grew up dirt poor, and money has always been a huge source of anxiety for me, while she grew up middle class. She is terrible with money and doesn't care when I tell her it's stressing me out. I hate always having to be the bad guy when it comes to spending money. We would literally be out in the streets in a few months if I didn't constantly intervene in her spending. 
This weekend, she finally disclosed a lot of debt I didn't even know about. 69k in private student loans, a couple granted collections, and some credit card stuff. I had to spend a lot of time thinking about it, but I called off the wedding for a couple of glaring issues. 1. She ignores me when I tell her to cut down on spending, even when she knows I'm losing sleep over it. 2. How the heck are we ever supposed to have a stable life and kids someday if we have $10 in our account come payday? 3. I didn't want to get stuck with all of that debt and resent the heck out of her, which I probably would. 4. She's almost 40. What are the odds that she will ever grow up if she hasn't by now? Now for the top advice. Disagreements over money are one of the main predictors of divorce. You definitely need to both be on the same page before you get married. As I said on another thread, financial compatibility is just as important as romantic or sexual compatibility. They did a study on this. The best indicator of her compatibility in a relationship is their credit score. If the two people in a partnership have a similar credit score, they're more likely to work out. Why? Likely similar spending habits. Smart decision. Imagine the extra debt of the wedding she would want. Smart decision but took him long enough because I literally could see the glaring red flags from miles ahead. Doesn't care when I tell her it's stressing me out? Was far enough reason to dip already. Money is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, reasons couples fight. If she's not responsible with money by her age, you will not be able to change her. The result would be constant fighting about money or poverty. How does she still have that much in private school loans at 38? Bullet dodged. You sound responsible and still young. Good luck. Yep, my ex is 38 years old and acted like this. I was like, if he hasn't grown up by now, he's never going to. I dipped last week. Most likely facing divorce myself. I'm the breadwinner, and my husband is stupid with money among other things. He'll be 33 in a few weeks. I keep thinking, this can't be normal, right? He's almost 33. He's a grown adult. He should know better, or at least make attempts to do and be better about slash with money. Educate himself. And if he wouldn't do it now, will he ever? Thank you for giving me some extra perspective as I face an uphill battle in this process.